This is Michael Popak, and by the looks of things, it's Legal AF After Dark. What's going on again in Mar-a-Lago? Now we've got Judge Cannon, who's decided the jury, not the judge, is responsible for figuring out the law in a case. I'm sorry, that's the job of the federal judge. She's the lawgiver. The jury is the fact finder, but the way that the Judge Cannon sees things and the way she's made a proposal to the defense and to special counsel Jack Smith's team is why don't we get together and have a debate on jury instructions about having the jury figure out what the Espionage Act means or what the Presidential Records Act means means or its application. Like, I'm sorry, that's your job. Anyway, we, we discuss it, analyze it, break it down and debate it one place on the dial <laughs> on Legal AF. Take a listen. By the way, is our perfect segue to uh, Judge Cannon and everything that uh, she's doing, not doing. I mean, the messiest, sloppiest docket I've ever seen. I'm not sure that she even knows which motions she hasn't even ruled on yet. We also learned that for some various odd and suspicious reasons, some of her clerks quit in 2023 as well, which is very unusual. And then they try to come up with justifications why they left. It still sounds pretty suspicious to me. Like she hasn't made basic rulings on the status of whether documents that Donald Trump wants to make public, like classified, rather I should say, um, confidential witness information and confidential witness list, confidential statements pursuant to the protective order can go to the public, which special counsel Jack Smith filed a motion for reconsideration when Judge Cannon previously wanted to release them, saying it would cause manifest injustice and that she applied a clearly erroneous legal standard by converting a basic a good cause standard for keeping this information confidential to one of the government needing to show a compelling interest, which Jack Smith said, you just followed the complete wrong 11th Circuit law, like just look up the most basic case. So she hasn't really ruled on that. She issued a SEPA ruling this past week that we've been waiting for, although she said she would be issuing kind of the non-classified portion of the order, but she hasn't released that yet. So all we see is the sealed uh, order, which is basically literally just a, a caption page right there. But in typical Judge Cannon fashion, she kind of makes the order non-order, where she rules that special counsel Jack Smith can withhold documents pursuant to SEPA section for certain classified documents. But she always does this on all of her things, reserving ruling on part of it. So she like reserves the ruling so she could avoid actually making the order that Jack Smith can appeal. So that's kind of a very odd way of doing it. I mean, you either grant a motion or you deny a motion or you can continue the motion. She kind of comes up with these things where she's like, well, when it comes to something, I will kind of temporarily deny it without prejudice. But let me come up with a game, everybody. You want to play a game? You know, and I kid you not when you're like, Ben, what the heck are you talking about? Are you losing your mind? Why would I want to sign up for Patreon.com Legal AF if you're talking about games? Well, because that's what Judge Eileen Cannon is doing right here. And in one of the strangest orders I've ever seen, and Popak, I've I've reached out to everyone from like Harry Littman and all of my national defense and national security lawyer friends, and they're like, we've just never seen anything. Like, we don't even know what this is. You know, like, this is not a normal order at all. And basically in it, Judge Eileen Cannon tell special counsel Jack Smith and Donald Trump, but it's really directed at Jack Smith. I want you to assume that the jury makes the following factual findings. And therefore, I want you to assume both of these scenarios are correct, these different scenarios, and provide jury instructions to a hypothetical jury about how you would instruct them under 18 U.S.C. Section 793, which is the Espionage Act. Let me just pause there for a second and say this, like instruct the jury. Look, there are model, what's called model jury instructions that juries get 
in criminal cases and civil cases. And it's actually the lawyers for the different parties, the prosecution, the criminal defendants or the plaintiffs and the defendants who basically you go, you look up what the model instructions are and you provide the model instructions to the judge. So you do the work. The judge usually looks at them and goes, got it. These are the ones I'm turning over to the jury when the jury ultimately reaches a verdict or when the jury gets instructed on the law, you're sending, you're providing those to the judge and the judge turns it over. Now, there's usually not a lot of controversy here at all because there are model instructions that are followed. So here, when it comes to the Espionage Act, there would be model Espionage Act instructions because guess what? Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793, has been around since 1917. So we know how to do this. This is not some novel law that was just created. There are model instructions. In a case like this, and this is the Mar-a-Lago document case where Trump unauthorized and in an authorized matter withheld national defense information, you would go and look up, okay, I'd, I'd do my little research on my, on my legal tools. I would say, okay, here's the model instructions, or I would look at other cases in Florida or the 11th Circuit, federal court, and I would say, God, I hear my jury instructions, judge, here they are. And they're just model generic instructions that the jury gets. Here, Judge Cannon basically says, here are two scenarios I want you to consider. Riddle me this. In one scenario, I want you to assume in a prosecution of a former president for allegedly retaining documents in violation of 18 U.S.C. Section 793, a jury is permitted to examine a record retained by a former president in his or her personal possession. And then another hypothetical scenario, assume Jack Smith that a president has sole authority under the PRA, the Presidential Records Act, to categorize records as personal or presidential during his presidency, his or her presidency and provide instructions to the jury, assuming the jury finds those things to be correct. Well, both of those things are just completely false. There isn't a special former president presumption or exception. And by the way, this is where Judge Eileen Cannon got reversed previously twice by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, where she was acting like Donald Trump got special privileges and special benefits because he was a former president. And the 11th Circuit said he doesn't. And the 11th Circuit previously ruled in reversing Judge Eileen Cannon twice regarding the search warrant that Donald Trump has no, this is a direct quote from the 11th Circuit, no possessory interest over these documents which belong to the government, which belong to we the people, not Donald Trump. Her second hypothetical scenario is saying basically Jack Smith, assume that Trump can telepathically declass this. This is what it means when you break it down, that Trump can telepathically declassify records and not only that, declare it his personal property under the Presidential Records Act, including our nuclear codes, our classified information, just because he's like, trust me, bro, and then the courts have to just agree with that and no federal courts can question that at all. Both of those scenarios are not just flawed, but like tinfoil hat flawed. And she wants Jack Smith to assume this. So let me just round it out by saying she wants Jack Smith to respond. I think Jack Smith is not going to take the bait. He's not going to respond to either of these. I think he's going to say we can't. Both are flawed. Here are the model jury instructions. Here's what the 11th Circuit says. We, we think that you should submit the model instructions and then see what she does. Again, you go, well, why isn't Jack Smith filing an appeal to this? Why isn't he filing a mandamus? The question becomes like a mandamus to like, what is this? Like I'm not, like, no one even recognizes what the heck this thing even is that she, is it, is this a final order? Is this, is this a game she's playing? Like what in the world is, is this even what, what is this even? So that's kind of the quagmire Jack Smithson, ultimately canon, not qualified to be a judge, not qualified for this case. But like th this is, again, no one's even seen this uh, before. So Michael Popak, I think I rounded out that issue. I'd love for you to talk about Stephanopoulos and the defamation case there. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to say on canon, do that. But I think I, I think I chewed that, that topic up. Uh, yeah. So, so the, pe and, and so the people know Ben and I communicate and <laughs> we agreed that he would do the lion's share of, of, of canon. I don't want people like in the chat, like, Oh, Popak didn't get to say anything. We, we, we chatted. Then we decided that, that was that was a good use of both of our time. Today. You got DA, I got Cannon. You I get, get right. Stephanopoulos. Exactly. No. Right. I, right. I don't want to think people like, oh shit, you know, they didn't they didn't do that right. 
But uh, on the, the only thing I'm going to say is, and we'll keep track of it. And Judge Ludig, who's one of our our, um, our honored, hopefully regular guests here on the Midas Touch Network on Legal AF, uh, you know, we're going to watch whether the Lemon Law is going to be implemented at the uh, 11th Circuit level once Jack Smith finally gets around to being able to find a way to bring an appeal of anything that she's been doing that you just outlined and whether the three strikes and you're out or what I call the lemon law is going to be applied to remove Aileen Cannon from continuing to, to preside over this case. I think the way I would put it, and I'll leave it on this before I turn to the other case down in Florida, Southern District of Florida, the Stephanopoulos case, which won't be around long. By the time, by the time we're done talking about it, it'll probably be about over um, and, and against Donald Trump, is that um, she, um, uh, from, the, from a Cannon standpoint and from a, a removal standpoint, the quicker she gets off the case, uh, the more likely justice is ever going to be done. And she has basically painted herself into a corner and she keeps doubling down on these ridiculous decisions that she makes. Like she starts off on the wrong foot in the choreography and she never catches up. And then she doubles down on it, as you've just described. And the result is she's painted herself into a corner and now her ego is invested. And so, and, the, and this is what I think the 11th Circuit regardless of which three judge panel gets assigned to this and and she better hope it's not Rosenberg or um chief judge chief judge Pryor because they've already had it had it with her in the first two appeals before the case even got to an indictment stage when she tried to interfere with the executive branch doing its job uh, I think that um they go, you know what? She's just, there's just too many wrongheaded, lack of judgment decisions, and it's impacting and undermining the administration of justice in her courtroom. That's what I would do as Judge Popak. Um, I don't get to be that. I get to be podcast host, colleague of yours, and, and, and a part time professor on YouTube, but that's what I would do. Well, if you like that, and you like lawyers talking about things that they know what they're talking about, how refreshing. You've come to the right place. It's called Legal AF. It's only on the Midas Touch Network exclusively there. It's Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and then on hot takes that we do about every hour as the leaders of Legal AF. We've got some big news. If you like the law and you want to learn more about it and the building blocks, the molecular level of things that we talk about every day, every hour on Legal AF and on the Midas Touch Network, we got a new Patreon page. It's called Patreon. Well, you'll find it at patreon.com slash Legal AF for exclusive content you can't find anywhere else on YouTube, and you certainly can't find it within the Legal AF show itself. But you just saw an example of it. It's free. Free subscribe to the Midas Touch Network, that's for sure. And then join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time and on hot takes just like this one. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.